believe I was on a live about an hour ago and then my internet crashed for whatever reason. I've been having internet nightmares combined with phone nightmares. I don't know if it's time for a new phone or if it's something to do with my internet. But even when I go to upload videos, it's taking like little old days at this point, which is just bizarre to me. But anyways, today's video, we're going to be doing an LED light unboxing. And then we're also going to be repotting these three cannabis plants behind me, discussing some of the issues on them. And then of course, you guys can toss your questions down in the comment section below. I have these beautiful uh, gloves. They're called Lilo Flex gloves. Anyways, these are the touch uh, screen versions of gardening gloves which is really, really nice as someone who uh, is on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. Uh, I'm always gardening and I've been not using gloves, but these have officially solved my issue. So kind of cool. It's not paid advertisement, but I do enjoy them. So the first thing I want to get your guys' opinion on, I have another grow light. Yes, I'm officially collecting grow lights. But this one's slightly different, um, and there's a few reasons for that. But I want to get an idea of what you guys want. Do you want to have like an aquaponics or a hydroponic system, um, like series video for indoors? And the reason I ask this is because as cold climate gardeners, both in the US, Canada, we have some Europeans on this channel, we run into issues uh, with a short growing season, and then obviously our grocery bills begin to climb or in some cases skyrocket in uh, the winter months. So I wanna know if you guys would want hydroponic, aquaponics, or just regular gardening with like potting soil instead of grow tents, instead of rooms, and then more specifically, what you wanna see grown. So are we looking for herbs? Are we looking for fruits? Are we looking for vegetables? Because in my mind, I don't know what economically is valuable for a home to plant and if you guys don't know the answer to that either then obviously i have to experiment and try to figure this out but i i would just be interested in what you guys have to say i'm doing it regardless but i just want to know what kind of videos you want out of it so because I, I do know some people that do hydroponics and i'm not doing a crazy setup like i'm doing rubbermaid type setup because i'm cheap so that's what we're doing we don't need to spend a ton of money on really fancy systems doing like real basic stuff but anyways I will leave um, the link to this LED light below so I'm just continually trying to find uh, cheaper and cheaper options for LED lights and then also ones with different options on them so this LED light is an Amazon light and it is even less expensive than all the other ones I have shown you now the key to this one is that it has a uh, Bluetooth remote, which is very, very nice, but it also has a dimmer switch on the side here, which quite honestly is hugely valuable because I'm finding with my Mars Hydro lights and my, uh, what's the other one I have? Uh, Viva Sun, I think is the other LED light. I have a couple now and they're too intense. And despite me going down in size and upping my size in tent, they're just, it's too intense. It's way too uh, strong and actually burning some of my plant leaves, um, including like my cannabis, things like that. So this dimmer option on an LED light is very, very valuable. If you guys are doing seedlings, house plants, or you're trying to um, just grow plants in general indoors and you're trying to grow a wide variety, not necessarily always cannabis or peppers or tomatoes, then you want to get this dimmer option because you want that to be available to you. Otherwise, you will scorch your plants. So the dimmer option comes with this one. And like I said, I will leave that in the comments down below. I mean, uh, Lux lighting wise, they're kind of all the same. Um, from that perspective, there's, I've never seen ones that really have stood out to me in any regard, but that is a full spectrum white light. It's not like the blurple type color. It's white light and it has the LED on and off or the Bluetooth on and off, which is very, very nice. And it has the dim on. So that's really cool and that's again being used for my hydroponics uh, type setup and i want to try to make this as least expensive as possible so i'm gonna check comments and then we're gonna jump into these bad boys behind me and getting these repotted and maybe going over um what's going on with them so i'm just gonna move that way a little bit just shuffle i'm gonna shuffle and then all my dogs are gonna get up and they're gonna be like what are we doing are we going for a waok -okay? <laughs> Poor Jack. My one cat just likes gardening with me so much. 
Okay. I personally like a variety, but planting herbs and vegetables together kind of going hand in hand. Yeah, see, and that's where I'm kind of stuck. I don't know if I should do like lettuce or herbs or um, like cucumbers, potatoes, root vegetables. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to uh, select. Like I'm thinking lettuce and herbs because that's something that you know, you always want on hand, you're gonna be using on a regular basis and there's not a huge wait time between harvesting. So, very Ontario artist in the garden. Hello, how you doing? Uh, Crips and Belkin gardening. Oh, Belkin-y gardening, okay. I had to do a video maybe on that, just in um, container gardening in general. Actually, as a container gardener or a balcony gardener, you guys, are not hard done by don't make yourselves think like you don't have the Cadillac of options because I'm actually currently growing artichokes in containers I grow my peppers in containers and I actually find that tomatoes also do better in containers than they do in the ground in a lot of cases that's why all my tomatoes are always in raised beds so I can definitely do a video on that I gotta do a video on my artichokes growing in Canada but I want to get them to the flowering stage so I'm not just running my mouth and being like, yeah, I can grow artichokes. I wanna make sure I can actually grow artichokes. So this is my first year doing it. Everyone said it's really, really difficult to do, but I so far haven't had any issues. So I don't know what the difficult part of all this is. So anyways, these are my three cannabis plants. Um, if you guys did not know, it is the law in Canada. You're allowed to own these uh, things, these trees and uh, you're allowed to have four four plants and these are all my female versions now i have something going on with these ones um which is perfect for video purposes so uh this i, I keep them actually pretty pretty well trimmed because if you don't trim these off they will actually just keep on uh, making more and more shoots more and more colas and it just takes longer and longer to flower. So I'm actually gonna clean off all this excess, um, similar to what we do with a pepper plant or with a tomato plant. Now, this guy, he's relatively uh, healthy. This guy though, I think I have stressed to the point of no return. Um, so he is in a container that is much too small and I would argue that this is probably the cannabis version of bolting. Uh, so high heat, lack of water, and I'm here. <laughs> this is where I'm at. So I am officially flowering uh, this plant by complete mistake. And you can see I've got these yellow leaves, which is indicating lack of nitrogen. Now it's not because my soil was lacking nitrogen. It was because I was not watering this plant. Uh, we went to the lake and I didn't repot these. I'm not a cannabis user, so I'm not super heartbroken by this. But if you ever wondered if you can get uh, marijuana off a plant at a very small stage in life, it is possible. You just have to stress the absolute bejeebus out of them. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to remove these because they look ugly, but you don't actually have to remove them. Um, you can leave them in place. Now, people will say that this is taking nitrogen from the plant yada 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 it's not actually it's um technically more of a disease reason for removing dead foliage and that goes with any plant anywhere uh, tomatoes behind me pepper plants whatever it's more of a disease issue because um, a lot of viruses bacteria um, that are harmful will actually hibernate or live inside of the uh, dead leaves so you can see we've got some blotching on there slightly suspicious so it definitely needs to go nutrient wise however if we leave these leaves on the plant we actually the plant will actually pull uh, any nutrients that is still water soluble and still in the xylem of the phloem of the plant back into the plant itself for uh, uh, nutrient purposes but yeah like I said like this is not a good situation so we'll see what happens obviously whatever I get off of it I get off of it I don't know what I'm gonna do with it I'm not a smoker I'm actually really bad at smoking not gonna lie but uh, we're gonna put these guys in pots I do not put my cannabis in the ground because I do not put peppers in the ground either I do not put artichokes in the ground and uh, there's a reason for it 
they need shorter growing seasons and they need higher heat. When they're in a Canadian ground, it doesn't get hot enough to germinate or trigger that life cycle. But if they are in containers, we're able to trigger that life cycle much, much sooner. And then also just the heat in general of the roots is actually hugely beneficial to the plant itself. So that's my experience. Now, some people may argue that um, if you put cannabis plants or a pepper plant, um, or in some cases a tomato plant, depending on the variety, in, or artichoke, in the ground, uh, it just will keep growing and growing. Uh oh, oh, my puppies are gonna start barking here. Kitty key. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, <laughs> good boy. <laughs> you can stay here, shut up, baby. Yeah, you can stay here. You'd swear he's part, part piglet. No, you, you can stay here. Yeah, come here. Hi. Yeah. This is the puppy. What? Snorty, snorty. Snorty, snorty. Okay, you can go now. So tough. No, 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 I don't want kisses. I'm good. Okay, so, um, I'm gonna put this one that's almost done into this container so this is reused potting soil um i mix it with fresh peat moss manure and then depending on how degraded my perlite is i will put more perlite in i like to use the coarser or the medium grade uh, perlite and in an ideal world when saskatoon saskatchewan canada has better access and better pricing for things like pumice or volcanic rock then that's something that I will look at getting. Uh, I don't think people realize this, but Canadians pay a lot for uh, goods and services compared to the US. And it's just because we're that remote, which I just I find ridiculous. Like our Amazon Prime, this is funny. Our Amazon Prime, we pay for it. We pay the same as the Americans do, probably more to be honest. And it's not next day shipping. It's not same day shipping for a lot of people in Canada. It's like a week from the day you order it. So. Anyways, I'm just going to check comments here again real quick. Owen. That's crazy. Um, but in Saskatchewan in zone three, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. In Saskatchewan, in the northern portions of Saskatchewan, it is uh, daylight until very, very late <laughs> at night. In, uh, in my area. So I will be outside um, and it will be 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night and uh, it'll be this color right now. So I think uh, currently it's 9 p.m. and it's daylight. So talk about having a hard time sleeping. And then because we're so far north, our days are so, so long in the summer that ones, what ends up happening is like four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, the sun is back. So you can actually see the sun starting to rise at like 2, 3 a.m. That's how crazy that is. But in the winter, we drive home black until probably 9 a.m. And then um, as you get uh, like later in the day, like 4 or 5 o'clock, it um, gets even it's, it's still dark. It's dark when you go home at work for work. So I think someone said my connection is spotty. I apologize. Uh, I opened up the live with this, but guys, I don't know why, but my career in Saskatoon is just ho is horrible. Um, my videos uploading onto YouTube are taking hours, days in some cases. And so it's just, it's not good. I don't know what's going on. I read somewhere that there was a solar flare and I've convinced myself that it's a solar flare. I mostly have coli plants. Hopefully I didn't lose you guys again. Did I reconnect? I think I did. It just said I disconnected. I am so sorry. I'm trying to do a live and my internet is so horrible. It's been horrible for the last little bit. Hopefully it's not unbearable to watch. I'll, I'll catch you in the next one, yeah. That's that's unfortunate. If you, it's unbearably blotchy, I apologize. You don't have to watch 
but any hazers. Um, so planting my cannabis, you can actually plant these deeper, just like you would a pepper plant or a tomato plant, but uh, I'm not gonna go too, too deep. I'm just gonna go regular height. I don't want too much root in there. I actually need to get these to start blooming here soon because that time of year, I don't wanna say fall is coming, but fall is coming. Unfortunately, that is just the reality. Um, so with my cannabis, um, you can use organic or inorganic means of fertilization. It's kind of up to you. Uh, I don't really find a difference either way. Um, and as in regards to results, I had like a little, little mini argument going on. Um, <laughs> in one of the videos where someone was saying that, uh, or inorganic fertilizer is evil and uh, it affects the quality of the food, it affects the plant, it affects the soil. And then another person was saying, well, no, it doesn't. Um, all nutrients is nutrients to a plant. And I would have to agree with the second opinion. When it comes to uh, nutrients, and I can do a video on this where I can go into more depth with this if you guys want, but um, bioavailable nutrients is bioavailable nutrients. So a plant needs ammonia uh, to grow NH3 or NH4 to grow and NH4 is NH4 regardless if it's in an organic form or an inorganic form. Now you can have the argument of Monsanto is evil. Okay, fine. So we can say that um, big corporations are evil and then, you know, smaller places like Gaia Green, they're not uh, inherently evil. So I mean, you could have from that standpoint, okay. But from the standpoint of plant health, soil health, uh, nutrients is nutrients. Now, conventional fertilizers do contain salt in them because of the manufacturing process. Salt is not good for the soil. It's not good for plants. And that's why you can over fertilize with or inorganic uh, fertilizers. So if you are an over fertilizer and you think, oh, you know, I'm not going to be very good at this. Um, it's going to end poorly for me. Then maybe stick with more of an organic method of actually growing. Uh, your plants but other than that I mean it is what it is um, plants don't care the microbes have to break it down or put everything into the same uh, spot regardless the plant has very specific needs and that's why it releases exudates to get those specific needs and um, it, everything ends up in the same form at the end of the day uh, less or minus salt so uh, that would be my only thing so uh, quite honestly it's not going to affect your flavor and stuff now your ph and the micronutrients that are available at the ph of your soil that's a different conversation that will affect your um, your flavor and your flavonoids in any plant not just cannabis but also tomatoes peppers uh, lettuce herbs all that sorts of stuff and another thing to know too is that with the the pH changes, is that he better not bark again. I think he's gonna end up barking again. Um, candy cane. Candy cane. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but he sees other dogs through the gate. And he's like, I want to run after them. Um, Anywho, there's a pH is a different story. And and uh, organic and inorganic soils will, you know, they'll gonna affect your pH in much different ways. So that is something, that is an argument that you could uh, come at me with. And uh, I would have to agree with you, the management system for both fertilizers is drastically different. Oh, there's a little centipede in my, in my peat moss. You can stay in there, I want to go, you're okay. Okay, that guy is done. Like, I'm gonna have to start doing um, some phototropic stuff with these cannabis plants because I'm running out of season um, and I want to have indoor gardening this year for you guys. And lots of videos about it, but I, bleh, I don't want cannabis indoors. I'm sorry, but the smell, I can't not do the smell. Let me know in the comments if you can do the smell because I, 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 I. 
I don't know why, but there's cannabis. It's in my grow tent. It's in the basement. It's in a room. I can smell it. It's there. This is Kane, by the way. Kane, are you the bad dog? Oh. He's like, no, I'm just a puppy, I swear. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, oh god. Oh. He's really not that fat. He just really wants to cuddle right now. It's like usually you're sitting down reading a book. What are we doing? Why are we awake? Okay, come on. These are the parts of the so those are the parts in the video that usually get edited out. I don't know if you guys noticed, but Bronx, uh, he just stole my plant. Kane! Dude, what's wrong with you? He just ran away with my plant. Um, Kat, Bronx yesterday was in my uh, Lee Valley Live. So thanks to any of you that actually ended up making it out to the Lee Valley Live. You can, I posted it in the community section. You can watch the playback on it if you guys want. It sounds like I may be doing more because people enjoyed it um, who are watching and then Lee Valley enjoyed it. They thought it was really informative and then they were kind of impressed with like how much knowledge I had just off my top of my head. The one girl after we were done was saying how, how uh, she just mentioned in passing, she's like, I, did, I, I just assumed everything was scripted and you just read off of like a piece of paper and you may be stumbling a little bit in the interview. I was like, no, like I studied this for four years. I worked in this field for nine and now I do a YouTube channel. Like this is my life. I'm nine to five uh, science and then I am, you know, evenings and weekends science. So it's just, it's not stop. And then my hobby is plants too. Like I don't, I don't have a hobby outside of this which is very, very sad. Well, I shouldn't say that. I like fishing, I like hunting, I like hiking. But even when I'm fishing, hunting, hiking, it's like about the forest and it's about the ecosystems. It's about the land, that sort of thing. But I'm gonna reach my plant that's out in front of me. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lean forward. This is so weird, because usually I'd hit pause and I would grab my plant and I would cut out the whole section of my dog being crazy. But unfortunately, we're here with puppykins I thought he was gonna bring it back to me. He's not. He stopped bringing it back. He just walked over top of it. Someone on one of my videos um, commented, they're like, oh, your, your yard looks terrible. Your lawn looks horrible. And I had to laugh, you guys, because it does. Like, my lawn looks absolutely horrific, but it's because of nutbag there and, uh, uh, the older puppy when they play they play in the lawn they don't want to play on the cement here so they play in the lawn they dig they you know it is what it is i own dogs it's just lawns aren't a thing but they do for the most part stay at the garden which i heavily appreciate because if they didn't oh my gosh i would cry but they do stay out of that for the most part which is very very nice but um yeah they're pretty cute cute little puppies uh staring at me right now. They're like, what are we doing? Oh gosh. She's got hot all over me. Oh. Okay. That's done. I really, I keep these so sparse. Some of you are probably watching this. You're probably like, no, don't rip all those leaves off. But I literally, like, I don't have much left on the plant at the end of the year. I like it to really just focus on flowering. That is its main job. That's its main and only job. Okay. That guy, and this poor guy, who bolted on me that day. Yeah, you can tell. Oh my gosh, he's flowering. He's definitely flowering. Not good. Okay, I'm done my chores, I think. Question time. Hopefully the connection got better. There's 16 of you here. So I mean, it's gotta be okay, right? Or you're really struggling through this. Da, 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 da. Okay. Space Weather Canada says it's unsettled in intervals, but not enough to cause a problem. Oh, for the um, solar flares. Okay. So maybe it's not that. Maybe it's just Sastel's horrible internet, which quite honestly wouldn't surprise me. Uh, hey, 
for your front yard, make a sunflower patch since you love sunflowers. Next year's project, I know, I know, I love sunflowers. They're my actual favorite uh, flower. And uh, my mother-in-law, like out at the big garden, which honestly I haven't had much time to get out to doing all my work for, for me, unfortunately, but I've been just, Oh, amount of knowledge is really impressive. It's really not. It's really not. It's not impressive, you guys. It's just, it's like, it's, it, when you live it, you get it. And quite honestly, any of you could do what I'm doing. It's just you, if you're fully immersed in something, that is what you're good at. So I'm sure whatever you're immersed in for work or your life, you're a pro at. So if you're immersed in being a mom or being a dad, then you're probably an all-star mom or dad with, you know, a few mistakes in, in, in between, which is similar to what I would have. Um, and then same thing goes for work. Like if that's your thing, that's your thing. You're a pro, you're a pro at whatever you're doing day in and day out. It's just inevitable. So the obsessive gardener. Hello. 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 You guys are so quiet tonight. Usually you're so talkative. So many questions that's okay it's the heat right so any hoosers we are coming up on a half an hour and my internet connection is i can actually see it like coming in and out unfortunately so i don't want to make too much of a patchy video and the experience too too awful and i'm hoping that this will get uploaded so everyone else who is watching is able to watch fingers freaking crossed but i will talk to you guys next time uh, be sure to leave your questions down in the comment section below. I answer all my comments regardless of who and what they are. Nasty or nice, uh, they are in. Uh, I answer them them all. But yeah. So, oh my gosh, Bronx just passed out. He's like, so my one dog's probably like 13 years old. And he just fell asleep, like sitting straight up. And he almost tipped over and he just woke himself back up. He's going senile. I just saw a question about peppers. I think that was the obsessive gardener that asked that question. I do not know how to use these. This thing. Okay. Are you growing peppers? Yes, I am. I'm growing um, jalapenos and Hungarian peppers. And I want to say the Hungarians are mild and healthy. Jalapenos are jalapenos, so they're hot. Uh, but overall, they're pretty tasty. Pretty, um, but it's hard to say, uh, but they are bouncing back now, so that's good. But yeah, I am growing peppers, um, and they are in containers. I do not plant them in the ground whatsoever. They are above ground always. So, any hoosers? Hola, hola. <laughs> that's awesome. You ever? Corn, sweet corn. Do I ever corn, sweet corn? Like, what do you mean by that? Um, milkweed. I do have sweet corn growing behind me. I don't know if you can see that. And you can kind of see it sticking up like, oh gosh, right there. That's sweet corn there. Corn, sweet corn. Noise. Uh, I want to know if you, if anyone is using azomite. Is it worth it? Azomite. Yeah, so azomite and uh, zeolite and cinderite are all very similar in uh, both cation exchange capacity, function within a soil system, um, um, and then of course uh, micronutrient wise. So definitely valuable for drainage, aeration, that sort of thing, but I mean, it's gonna work the same as like a pumice or a volcanic rock, minus the fact that pumice isn't going to have as much micronutrients as like an azomite or a zeolite or a cinderite. So there is some studies. Um, I really hope to get him on here one day, but uh, one of the soil specialists for uh, cinderite actually has reached out to me and we keep on planning to do like a Zoom call that we would then put on the channel, but it is in regards to um, some really unique physics properties 
to uh, Cinderite as my um, that sort of thing, and how this is this is really sci-fi science here. It's very cutting edge soil science, so I'll, I'll let you in on the details. But um, essentially, there's a thought that they hold a charge, and so and then that charge just on a physics level sending out kind of like electrical signals in a way and those electrical signals uh, interact with the roots and actually can control things like nutrient uptake and just overall root health communication with the root to the soil and it just kind of connects the battery of the soil all together so whenever you hear me saying that in a video and I've never really uh, elaborated on that but whenever you hear me say in a video